Let's talk Six Nations. Ooh, Finally, man. here we go. JB, you're not as ex- you're not as excited or enamoured about this as you normally are. What's going on? I'm never really that enamoured by it. What, what do you mean never? You used to make a little jingle the most rugbyest time of no, the year when that, the Six Nations would come Nations. around. That was um, for all, for autumn internationals. Was it? It was, yeah, because yeah. It all. It, it, yeah, in Europe, we sort of welcome the whole rugby world. Uh, so Six Nations' the usual uh. trajectory is this: I'm loving the Premiership. Life is great. And Six Nations is interrupting it. And then by the end of Six Nations, I'm like, that was amazing. <laughs> that was unbelievable. Uh, and that will usually come about, usually on Super Saturday, which I can't remember the last underwhelming Super Saturday, come, come to think of it. Yeah, they whether, tend to be pretty pretty handy. Whether it's because we're in Lisbon, or <laughs> Madrid, or Bucharest, yeah. or any of these places. So, you know... It's usually pretty, it's usually pretty good, but I'm always underwhelmed by the start start of Six Nations, always, and even more so this year. Well, hopefully we will be somewhere fun uh, for the final weekend of the Six Nations this year. Is this the plan? This is the what plan. What is the final weekend of the Six Nations this year? Well, the, the final weekend of the Rugby Europe Championship. Saturday, March the 18th, is Scotland, Italy, France, Wales, Ireland, England. Mm. But it's also but it's the f- finals of the. Um, rugby, Europe, rugby Europe Championship 2023. Which we can watch in Seville, right? We might be able to watch it in Seville. Yes. Um, or we might be able to watch it in, potentially, uh, Lisbon or Malaga or Amsterdam. How on, are they going to go back, back to Malaga? I'd go back to Malaga in a heartbeat. So we, we don't know because the last two weekends of games on the 4th, 5th of March and the 18th, 19th of March are knockouts. Right, so what are the potential... Okay, so there's now eight teams playing in that competition in two ra- two groups of round robins. Okay. And then you play... Uh, a se- is it semi-finals and final? Yeah, semi-finals and finals. So this is interesting. So if we were to go to Malaga... Malaga would be my... I don't know, Malaga or Lisbon would be my preferred des- destination. Why are you not putting Madrid on the on the table there? Oh yeah, it might it might be Madrid. Oh, it could be Madrid. Could oh, be right. Madrid. So you're not saying if Spain so, gets the final, it'd be... it, so the teams in the final. Yeah, I'm not saying it. The, right. No one knows. Even probably even the Spanish um, Federation of Rugby Union do not themselves know. Mm, interesting. Uh, so the teams are, well, we've already mentioned Spain and Portugal. Yep. Um, Belgium, Georgia, Germany, Netherlands, Poland, and Romania. Right. So we know it's not going to be Belgium. Uh, well, because of the way it's set up, yeah, we so don't know. Two, so let, you break off into two groups, yeah. So everyone plays. So let's just let's just keep an eye on it. But yeah, it's, it's, yeah. it's all bubbling. So it's, Tim, it's like where, where are your priorities, mate? Well, it's just like talking about the hypotheticals of what may or may not happen. Because as Phil said, yeah, we but don't. I want to go yet. away on holiday. We don't know yet. Yeah. yeah, this is like the best part of Six Nations is watching. So Phil's, so Phil's away. already said it could be this. It could be this. It could be this. But I want to know. <laughs> but we don't know. We I'm not going to Georgia. Know. I'm not going to Romania. Right. My go, my go to Germany. Basically, Georgia. I like the sound of Tbilisi. You go. No, you di- go. no direct flights is a bit of an the fl- issue. The flights. Why do you need issue. a direct flight? <laughs> you're, you're, you're the last person that needs to worry about direct flights. <laughs> um, let's play this way. I'm rooting for for my Iberian friends to win. Yes. Yeah. I'm, I'm with. I agree with that, and I can go with. Yeah. Hundred percent. Go with you on that. I'm not into waffles. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> don't really want to go to Germany at this time. Don't want to go east. How should we talk about this Six Nations then? Do you want to just like briefly? <sighs> I have no idea who's even good this year. So I don't know if Wales is going to be good. Well, if if form is anything and history is anything, the more turmoil that the WRU is in, the better Wales play. Return so, of Gatland. So, so this year they're going to be absolutely dynamite because yeah. the WRU is falling apart. And they open up home to Ireland. Mm. So the I, w- think, I think Ireland are going to smash them. Yeah. So the WRU CEO resigned today, did he not? Steve Phillips. Steve Phillips resigned, yeah. Um, which is, of course, a ridiculous decision on his behalf. So uh, the reason he resigned, we won't we'll go into that. If you, like you say, if your if your union is in turmoil in Wales, if you could hold on for eight weeks and be on the verge of a grand slam, if you win that grand slam, everyone's going to forget about everything. <laughs> like, res- resign. I mean, at least wait until <laughs> Ireland hammer you. Yeah, yeah. They just go like a coward. The Ireland hammering is likely, but 
then again, we've said these things in the past and they've ended up winning. Yeah, hey, if um, some of these Ospreys' performances are to go by, they do have a core of something in Wales which isn't terrible. They do. Although, I, th- although it is worth mentioning, I was looking at the URC table, I think Wales make up four of the bottom six or seven teams. But it's always there. been like that. How, all... how, I guess the question is, how much of a difference can Warren Gatlin make in a short period of time? Probably quite a lot. Because a lot of the players have played under him for many, many years. Like You look at that squad, most of them, there's, there's a few guys. Chris Tijunza hasn't done. Rob Hawkins coming in hasn't done. Um, uh, Rob sorry, Hawkins, I, the Leicester hooker from... No, um... No, Joe right. Hawkins, Joe Hawkins. Rob Hawkins. I think the, the big, the big <laughs> question is what do they, what are they going to do at twelve? That's probably in the whole Welsh team is the one area where because in, in in the front row that there's a clear first choice and they're significantly better and there's quite a big drop off. Um, back row they've got options, but they've got some more cap. Twelve is the one position where you're like I'm not 100 percent sure the way Gatlin's going to take it. He could go Mason Grady and just do a big lump like he did with Who? Jamie Roberts. Mason Grady, Mason Grady big. Yeah. Big, Never big, even heard of him. Big lad. You what got is it, Cardiff? You got Joe Hawkins. Okay. Rob Hawkins. Uh, yeah, and you've got um, who's the who's the so Mason Green, who's the little Cross. lad? Who's the smaller Nip, lad? Nip, Nip Tompkins. Oh, you got Not Nip, him. Nick Tompkins, obviously. No, no, it's the other new cap. Um, Kieran Williams. Kieran Williams. So Mason Grady plays. Have a look at Mason Grady. Uh, I've not got a picture of him, but big, big strong boy. Um, height and weight listed here. Um, again, caveat: these things are often wrong. He's listed at six foot six. Yeah, he is. And a hundred, what? And one hundred and thirteen kilos. Go with him. <laughs> I, I quite, from what I've seen of Hawkins, I quite like because he's not yeah. he's not a small he's not as big as Mason Grady. He's not a small lad, but he can play as well. He mm. can distribute. Mm. Yeah, I think Gatland. I think Gatland and Borthwick. And this is the question: is how much can these two guys? They've they've both got home games to start. England against their nemesis Scotland. Uh, and Wales against the world's number one team, Ireland. So it's, it's tough games for them both, but they're at home, and the question is how much can they turn around? I think they're both, Gatland and Balthwick, going to play a very pragmatic rugby. And I think I think Wales have got the personnel to do that. They've got Falatau looking really good. Mm. They've got a competitive back row. They, they'll, they'll work their nuts off, and Dan Bigger is just class. And their back three are really good when they get chances, so... I, I expect Ireland to win, but I think Wales. I think Wales can. Well, well, I think it'll be close, really close. I think Ireland have just got the the cohesiveness, and I, I think they've got a bit more up front, a bit more edge and excitement up front in the Ireland team. I agree so, with that. So I'd, I would, I would go with Ireland relatively comfortably in the end. I think standout but, standouts for this tournament uh, are going to be uh, Dan Sheehan. I'm thinking of people that might be players of the tournament potential. Uh, Kalen Doris, I love him. He's playing some really good rugby at the moment. And isn't it an interesting trend? Like, like number eights aren't um, some of the best number eights in the world aren't quite as big as they have been previously. Ardi Surveyor. yeah. Um, Kalen Doris is another one. Gregory Audrey, yeah. Sort of actually more all-round athletic um, handling. Heads up rugby number eight seem to be in vogue at the minute, and Caelan Doris is, is one of them. He's awesome. Yeah. Love well, him. add that to Lewis Ludlam, who I think will be uh, featuring for England. He's, he's violent. He isn't the. He, he is, is violent. He's, isn't he? he isn't quite the deft hands like Ardi Surveyor. But Ardi Surveyor's violent too. Oh, Ardi Surveyor. Yeah. yeah, he's destructive. Yeah, but Ludlam's a bit more. I don't know. Wild. Yeah. Elbows and knees. Elbows, knees, and contact. Constantly wriggling. Yeah, Moving, yeah, it's hard. But he, I think he'll be England's number eight. So, just on others in terms of the the island squad, I, th- I think Dan Sheehan. Yeah, Dan Sheehan's gonna. Yeah, he's I, awesome. I, I think he's he's such. When I first saw him, I did wonder maybe he's a bit lightweight to play international front row. I, I'm just wrong. Mm. He he's absolutely awesome. What's happened to um, Cronin? Is he still looking about? I always lo- love watching him play. Uh, Lenses oh, Cronin, yeah. the hooker. I think he's retired. Is he retired? I now? thought he'd retired. Yeah. yeah, I have no idea what goes on, on the, in your yeah. seat. <laughs> he might, he might, uh, Sean Cronin. But yeah, I, um, actor? No, no. Yeah, tell me about him. Rugby union player. Uh, 
He's yeah, retired at the end of the last season. Did he? Yes. Yeah. Felt like he never really got going. He, he was 36. Oh, sorry, he is 36. No way. <laughs> yes. So That's so. incredible. <laughs> uh, in- England plays Scotland. England, back row, back three, pick them. So you've already said Ludlam at eight. Who Ludlam. Oh, back row, England, back okay. row. Okay, hold on. I just, just, let me just engage my brain. Shall I say the names that there are in so the squad? Courtney yeah. Laws is out. Courtney Laws is out. You have Jack Willis, Ben Earl, Alex Dombrant, Sam Simmons, Lewis Ludlam, Ben Curry. Is that it? And Ollie, Chess- it. Ollie Chesham, you could Chesham, count as one. Right. Yeah. There you go. So, okay, so who's Ches- Chesham, you Curry. Have, you could have Itoji, I guess. Who, yeah, who is second rows? Uh, Itoji, Hill. Will be the stars. Chesham, likely. Ribbons. Uh, no. Uh, um, is he? Oh, is he? He's in the squad to replace Courtney Laws. In, which yes. did suggest that was he intending to play Courtney Laws back at second row again? Possibly. Or would he prefer to move Marrow to six? Hmm. Right. I don't know. So, oh. just just the back row. Just the back row. I just would, pick your back row. I would love to see. Uh, I'd love to see Willis at six, Earl at seven, Curry at eight. Curry at eight. Right. Yeah. So I, that's I, interesting. Well, actually, sorry. This is Ben Curry, isn't it? Yeah. No, take, I take that back. If it was Tom Curry, I'd say yes. I know they're genetically identical, but yeah. <laughs> they've uh, uh, nature and nurture and all that, and they've yeah. had slightly different nurturing. Yeah. Ah, oh, that makes it even more difficult. You've got Simmons, you've got Dombrant, Willis, Curry, can, Earl. Can you afford to have... I'd love to see Earl and Simmons, but can you afford to have that? I I think I would like Willis, Earl, Dombrant. I think it'll be Ludlam. Willis, Earl, I could go Earl, Willis, Earl, Dombrant. I think it'll be Ludlam, Earl, Dombrant. I think, he is, I think Steve Borthwick is going to pick Lewis Ludlam. I don't know if it'll be number eight, but I think he will pick him. Yeah, so I'm not sure he will. There's just something a little bit more unorthodox about him. In terms of the violence, do you know who uh, Lewis Ludlam reminds me of most? It's Jasper Visa. Mm. Interesting. I've not and, really... and Steve Borthwick kind of loves it. That's that violent runner, violent ball carrier, yeah. violent defensive. So I'm sort of trying to think, like, who is there who'd repli- replicate the Leicester back row? And well, there's not really... It doesn't really fit that well. Earl and Raffel's not a million miles away. Both got engines. Mm. Different, Raffel's, though. Yeah, Raffel's okay, more so of a Earl deserves Jack it. We'll put Earl, Earl, Earl in there. Yeah, so Earl at six. Just Earl at so, six? Why not? I mean, just, okay. just, just a place. So you play seven. <laughs> um, uh, Willis? Ludlam at eight. And then, oh, see if Tom Curry makes makes a big difference. Ben Curry, w- ben Jack Curry, Willis, no. Sam Simmons. They're the ones left. Uh, really. No, it doesn't work for me, that. Um, th- it's not big enough, is it? So Earl at eight, then. Willis on one flank. Ludlam on the other. No, that's not working for me either. I need to think about. Okay. <laughs> Mario, Earl. Mario, Earl, Ludlam. Hmm. Mario, Willis, Simmons. Willis, Earl, Dombrant. <laughs> I I think it's tough to pick but because there's not like a standout yeah combination I think for the really first is. squad you need just basically lads that do everything now if it was a, a really settled squad with a way of playing you can then plug in players that you think are going to complement your way of playing so Dombrant fits that nicely I don't think I just throw Dombrant into any any old team uh, there was a, a brilliant a Dombrant centric I, I can't remember who said it but someone made a brilliant point they said Dombrant and Smith off the bench would be a great thing to bring on together because they kind of mm, dove, yeah. they sort of dovetail work together as a, as a, almost like a little combo yeah they yeah. do great idea that is a good shout um, and of course you're talking about Marcus not Finn yeah Marcus not Finn obviously <laughs> uh, well, let's, do, let's just quickly do the same with England's back three because that's this is the other area where I think there's there's loads of options and you don't know what the combination he's going to come up with and just like one of the front runners potentially you would have thought in Courtney Laws is now dropped out Elliot Daly is now out for the Six Nations That's as well disastrous so oh. England's options are Freddie Stewart nailed on 15 he's going to be 15 he so is now so your two yeah your two wings come from Ollie Hassel Collins um, uh, Caden Murley yeah uh, who else we got Max Malins Max Malins Tommy Friedman Tommy Freeman. <laughs> And then might think was Anthony Watson called up? Did I read that somewhere? Was he called up? Did I read that? He played, he played, in. played this weekend, obviously. Anthony Watson, yes. He has been called up. He has been called up. 
Ooh, that, that changes things. So? So I, I would go OHC Watson, I think. I'd, I don't think Freeman's world class. I think Freeman is class. I love, I love, I love I'd, Tommy Freeman. I would love to see um, Hassel Collins and Murley on the wings. Hassel Collins and Murley Freeman. Get the kids in. Get the kids in. Absolutely. I, th- oh. I think those two could play the way that um, Borthwick wants as well. Kick chase, lots of effort, loads lots of, of work. Loads of work, right? Yeah. Can hang out on the wing, can come off the wing. Murley. Love him. Hassel Collins. Okay, they're, they're a bit inexperienced. A bit inexperienced. And then, three minute fullback. Mm. Really? Yeah, that's a, 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 a problem with problem you've got with um, the other boy who's Pretty stupid good. is yeah he's good in the air but he does also make a lot of mistakes in the air and he makes mistakes in defence and he's not as just that, that he's not got that magic that Freeman has at, uh, attacking well that's why I think OHC and Watson on the wings you've got big quick great finisher and you've got a really elusive runner and eventually that will be Arundel on the right wing. Well, yeah, and also Watson can play, play a bit of fullback as well, so he's pretty secure under the high ball. Um, Freeman can kick as well. So Freeman, I, lo- I love Tommy Freeman. Mm. I, 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 he would probably get my bench spot. I think you need him on the field. I think he's a, a, a player of world class potential, if not already world class. No, he's not actually. No, he's not world class potential. Yeah, world class potential. I would, I'm, I'll go with you on that, but he's um, not, not world class. But then, no, he's not actually, because you know who is world class potential? Arundel. Arundel oh, is, like, yeah. is just like he's only just come back from injury though. So yeah. yeah, yeah. But I'm saying like when you think about who's going to be like a world class, like your world fifteen type player, probably Arundel's the only one with the hands down raw attributes right now to say yeah. Oh, okay, if if Arundel if Arundel was a Kiwi, yeah, 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 yeah we yeah. would be f- froth. Well, we are, we are frothing about from, him anyway. Yeah, completely yeah. <laughs> agree with that. Another another position and get him get him in for his quads alone. Mm. Anyway, another position, hooker. Well, it's, it's like it's an obvious choice now, isn't it? Well, oh no, it's not because um, so obviously LCD is LCD is starting. Uh, yeah, he's out. And Jamie um, George, Jamie George is going through graduate um, graded return to play protocol or return be, to play he'll protocol. Be all right. He probably will be all right, yeah. but it's not definite. I'd be all right for twenty grand. <laughs> <laughs> Guarantee, I'd be all right. <laughs> um, you can't. But then the- you can't joke about these things, David. <laughs> 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 McGuigan, McGuigan was in the squad originally, and he's out. So you, if Jamie George isn't, you've got either Jack Walker or Tom Dunn. Jack Walker or Tom Dunn. Tom Dunn to me is. What's happened a... to Jamie Blabaya? Uh, he's not in the squad. <laughs> mm, that's not great, is it? As Tom options, Dunn. tell you what, Tom Dunn is just one of those guys who needs an opportunity. He, he gets an international team. I don't think he comes comes out of one. Well, he played. He got his cap one minute, eighteen months ago. Something like that. yeah, two minutes. Yeah, he is a nailed-on international. I think if he gets a good run in the England team, that might be the World Cup hooker. I do love Tom Dunn. I love how hard he works. I'm just not sure he's got the. the Trust top, me, he's got one. His, his basics. Very very good. He doesn't. Like, we were talking the other week about uh, Gus War. Yes. For for England, he might he might get a shot with another nation, but for England. His basics are brilliant, as good as anyone's. He just doesn't have he doesn't have any one attribute, one other attribute that he's ahead of the pack on anything. Well, and Tom Tom Dunn's like the same. He's the equivalent only, of Gus War only because attributes at scrum half are all quite technical. Like you don't really. I mean, maybe maybe the ability to chops a little bit is quite cool at scrum half, but like doesn't do any good for Chris Cook. So, what about Tom Dunn? Well, Tom Dunn. Like his skill is his aggression. I think he's unmatched with his, just his, his his toughness. And England don't have that. Like Jamie George is a, a great player. Uh, maybe Ka- maybe Cowan LCD. Dick, yeah, maybe Cowan Cowan Dick, he's got a bit of that. He does. He's got that him. edge. But Tom Dunn takes it to this next level. I just think he would be great in an international pack. Mm. There's no I, I, re- I really like Tom Dunn. Really like him. I'm just not sure. Tom Dunn. Give me Tom Dunn. Give me Tom Dunn starting the walker. Hmm. Put it on the whiteboard. Mm. Um, so, I guess overall, uh, there are still questions. I can't wait for Steve Borthwick's team, and I think he's going to set up a very, very pragmatic side. Steve Borthwick? 
Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Uh, I think it will, it will be box kick and kick chase. Box kick and kick chase work Best great. Best type of rugby. <laughs> uh, and Scotland are a massive banana skin, and I like the look of their team. I do. They've got secretly quite good. At, how, how yeah. they? They're strategic in how they stop all their players. Um, you, know, you just look at the performances of, of, of Edinburgh against Saracens, and you realise they were. You know, serious outfit now. And the surprise package, I don't know what, what Hamish Watson's fitness status is, but um, oh, the lad on the f- on the open side for Edinburgh, oh, what's his name, who's in the squad? I know exactly who you mean, and his name escapes me. But... Oh. Crosby. Luke Crosby. I like the look of this guy. Mm. He's a hard, nasty, and also just a really, really big, big open side flanker. Good over the ball, good ball carrier. I like the look of him. I think he could be the surprise. Is um, mm. boy from Bristol fit? Um, oh, Bradbury. Is no. Bradbury? He's he's not, Bradbury. He's, not, he's, he's not, fit, but he's not in the squad. The squad. He, pl- he, he played yesterday, but he's not in the squad. So I'm surprised at that because he has made a real impact for Bristol. One of the few good things about Lambs done. Well, that's what I mean. Scotland are really good. They've got a really good squad. But they've, they have got uh, Bayliss and Andy Christie, who are not not quite the same. Mm. Both both a um, bit more athletic around the park. I like both of them. They're a long way down my list of flunkers. Though. Cam mm. Henderson is in the squad, um, and we'll probably get a cap either off the bench or to start a second row. Leicester the Tigers. Leicester lot. Tigers. He, he's mm. he, he's looked really good, mm. and Ben Healy has moved across from uh, Ireland. Yeah, that's an interesting one. It, so has that actually happened? Yeah, he's in the squad. He's, in the squad. He, he's going to be moving from Munster to Edinburgh. Oh wow! And so he'll get a cap regardless. Then. Yeah, I think he'll probably earn it. He'll probably deserve it. Do you, why do you think that? I think he's decent. I think I genuinely think he's a good, uh, handy player. And I don't think he's bad, but I th- and also they've they've got so obviously Finn Russell, the the guy who's probably would be pushing for the second choice. Hastings is out for the tournament. Yes, um, Blair Kinghorn then moves up from full back to be Kinghorn, the, but he he might may well be starting on the bench. What is the guy who Edinburgh have? He's South African. He plays ten. Have they dispensed with him then? I know the guy you mean. Is it um, Underwalt? Yeah. Um, no, it doesn't matter. He's don't not in the know. squad. Well, yeah, he's he, not in the squad. Has he just been dispensed of? Is that is that thing over? Don't know. Don't know. Do you ask, you're asking the wrong guys. Okay, <laughs> but Tui Pilotu is potential player of the tournament. He's been in great form for is Scotland. He? Yeah. Wow. He, he's great. He's been great. I really like him. Really like him. There's an every day. So they, can, so they can play with him. Him and uh, Chris Harris is a pretty... Um, hard hitting centre pairing, or they could play with like Cam Redpath and Hugh Jones oh. and totally change it up. Tell you what, silky, I think skillful. So I do rate Cam, Cam Redpath. Cam Redpath, Chris Harris has got a lovely balance to it. Mm-hmm. It really has. That yeah. excites me quite Two a lot. Two will be starting 12. Isn't it an amazing thing that England could have had Cam Redpath, but they just decided against him? Mm. And one uh, winger in the squad transfers nation. Um, Byron, well, Rory Conicky comes in with Byron potentially going out, going right. out to, off to um, Namibia, Namibia for the World Cup, and then there's a, um, I mean the 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 four wing options are all um, good Scottish lads: Duan van der Merwe, Kyle Stein, Sean Maitland, who is his Scottish mother, mm-hmm. um, and Rory Mc, Rory McConaughey. Brilliant, good. <laughs> is you and Ashman in the, in the yes. squad? Scotland look mm. good. I'm telling you, Scotland are going to be a handful. Well, we'll see, won't we? We'll, we'll, we'll see on Saturday. Hmm. What's your, who's your money on? What, in this actual game? This game? I'm, I'm going no to No idea. I, I literally have to... I'd have are you? To see. I'm going to, I'm going to Twickenham for this talk one. Sport or... No, just... Off your own back. As a fan? As a paying fan with the... You can't. I'm going to Twickenham. You can't. <laughs> I'm going to Twickenham. That's all, that's all you need to know. You can't fall into my kitchen... Shouting sh- 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 about how you, how you never go and sit in the stands with the ruffians, and then go and sit in the stands with the ruffians. I'm going to be in the stands at Twickenham. Incredible. Mm, very cryptic, Tim. No, I'm just I'm going to be in the stands at Twickenham. What can I say? I'll be in the I'll be in the cabbage what? cabbage patch earlier as an in the day. Actual paying fan? Is it just? No I'm going, <laughs> and he's going to Twickenham. He's not telling us. Don't, don't, he's not telling us. I don't know what it is. I'm don't dig into this to too much, JB. Don't dig into this too much. I'm going to Twickenham. I'll be going to the cabbage patch before no the game. No more questions, please, JB. No, yeah. I'm just I'm just saying the, the facts on the ground are I'm going to Twickenham. Oh, there we and go. That's fine. So that's I'm and I'm looking forward to seeing Steve Borthwick's reign begin. I'm looking forward to. Singing Swing Low. I'm looking forward to. 
I'm not. I, I'm not looking forward to singing the national anthem. Why? God save the king. I hate the national anthem. I hate it. You I do. do. No, hate's a strong word. I really, really am completely ambivalent towards the national anthem. I love Jerusalem. Fifteen minutes before. Interesting. Kick off. Um, shall we do a quiz before we do any yes. more predictions or anything like that? Yeah, go on. You got your phones on airplane mode and okay. obviously write down. Yeah. So, this quiz was incredibly kindly sent to me by friend of the pod, Holly Poole. Oh, wow. Wow, so it will be good. Oh, it'll be a very good one. Um, well, let me just find it. Um, he has got it from, I'll tell you the book, he's been reading. <laughs> Ollie Poole has been reading uh, 500 Remarkable Rugby Facts for Kids. <laughs> <laughs> and from that, he has devised a 12-question quiz. And right. I've actually done this because he trailed it on me, and I got 12 points. Out of... Uh, there's probably about 20 available. Okay. So All right. Maybe 60% Talk for to me. me. You get that airplane mode on, JB, because you, you always lose the quizzes. You're going to try and cheat. <laughs> <laughs> right. First question is, which... Uh, so, player GPS has identified the fastest player in rugby history. Now, I don't. I, I would assume this is during a game. So there's two points available for this. One, who is the fastest player? And two, to the nearest half a metre per second, what speed were they doing? Half a metre per second? Yes, to the nearest half a metre per second. And I got that right, the to the nearest half a metre per second. All right, chill out. Hmm. So this is in-game, you're saying? I think... This, there's a couple of questions that I'm. They maybe needed a bit more um, clarity, but because oh, I'm trying to work out whether that fella has played 15s rugby, he must have done. He must have done. If 15s, it has to has to play 15s. 15s, yeah. Hmm. And I'll caveat this by saying it's 15s, and they must also have. Obviously, worn a GPS game in 15s. So, like JB, when you're scorching down the wing at 100 miles an hour, mm. you don't have, you're playing 15s, but you don't have GPS on your back. How do you know? Is it just a point for the getting the correct one? Is that it? Right. Okay. One one point for the correct one, and one oh, point right. for the speed. Come on. To the nearest half meter per second. Next uh, question number two. Now this is pertinent, um, and I uh, right now, and. I can't give you any more information on the question because this is all I've got. How many registered rugby clubs are there in England? <laughs> oh, JB, know this because this is right been, up the street this week. It's been in the news. I googled this, and the the response from this book was also the headline response. What I don't know is exactly what this constitutes. Does it does it include schools? Does it include universities? Is it just clubs? Yeah, well, I have a number in my, in my mind. Okay, and I'll give you if you're within fifty either side. I'll give you the point. Okay, question number three. Okay. Which country, which is the only country that'll be making its debut, World Cup debut, in 2023? The 2023 Men's Rugby World Cup. It's never been in a World Cup before. All of them, certainly the finals. Yeah. Okay. Question number four. The Barbarians have played Ireland six times. How many times have the Barbarians won? And there have been no draws. How many times have the Barbarians won? Yes, out of six. So, question number five. Mm Mm-hmm. Which two French teams have um, both... So, which two French teams have reached the finals of the Champion Cup twice without winning either time? So they've both reached the finals of the Champions Cup twice and they've both lost both times. Hmm, must be that one. Okay, Hmm. 
Hmm, interesting. Okay. You got um, two down, Tim? Uh, yeah, um, yeah, I have now. Done. I I'm not confident on the other one. Twice without question. winning. Question number six. Which four teams have a 100% win record in the final of the Champions Cup? So the last one was 0% from two. Which four teams have a 100% win record in the final of the Champions Cup? Great question. Hmm. Four teams have a... Four teams, yeah. Uh, okay. Oh, hang on. Hello. Hmm. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Just trying to go through the... What is in my head? Yeah, okay. Oh, I think I've got that. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, question number seven. In which year was the sin bin introduced? Christ. Uh, so it's still there then. Okay, I'm just going to guess. Next question. Question number eight. Only one player has been simbined in a World Cup final. Who was it? No idea. <laughs> I have no idea. Uh, nope. It's not getting easier. No, I'm, I'm no idea. It's just a guess. That's a tough question. <laughs> question number nine. How long did it take Michael Hooper to win his first 50 caps? And in, I want the answer in years. And if you get within a half year band, I will give you the point. Okay. Next one. Question number ten. The same pair of nations have faced each other in two separate World Cup finals on three occasions. Sorry, say again. The same pair of nations, this yeah. is uh, Ollie's wording, the same pair of nations have faced each other in two separate World Cup finals on three occasions. So, for example, if it was the Football World Cup, Brazil played Germany uh... in, I'm, I'm totally making this up, but in 1982 and in 2010. So the same pair of nations have faced each other in two separate occasions. In two separate occasions, I'll get that bit. So, say, in 1995 and 2003. Uh, yep, but then the last part of this is? Uh, so, two separate, two separate oh, right. occasions. So, two, so two different pairs have, so met, three, have met twice. So there are three pairs of teams. Three pairs of teams, Who have right. met twice each. So okay. Each, okay. So it would be Portugal, Argentina, yeah, yeah, yeah. Brazil, Germany, England, France, in the football equivalent, which is obviously nonsense, just as an example. Um, okay, got it, got it, got it, got it. Uh, yes. Hmm. Difficult. I think I've got it. I think yeah. I've got it, but I, I don't know if I have. <laughs> okay, you, get, you, get, you have to like think them all through. Is yeah, it, like, go I'm through going all. with it. I'm going with it. Okay, no, two questions to go. No, come on. Okay, got it. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it! Question, please continue. Uh, oh no, that is wrong. 
Go, carry on. Question number 11. Okay. Who is the only player to have won the Premiership Rugby Player of the Year twice? I have no idea. I did not know. I, even know, I, I, not. I couldn't even tell you last year's Premiership Rugby Player of the Year. Uh, n- no. Just not an important award. Yeah. But it's so well communicated. It, do you know what? The communication team at Premiership Rugby are second to none. <laughs> second to none. <laughs> Second only to the RFU team. I mean, that's high praise. <laughs> uh, and this is in the history of Premiership Must Rugby. Must be weird, mustn't it, for Premiership Rugby to feel like professionals? <laughs> um, okay, so I'm thinking... Premiership, Premiership Player of the Year. Premiership Player of the Year. I, I've got no idea. don't know. Next. Final question. Only two coaches have beaten the All Blacks as head coach with two different national sides who are they only two two coaches have beaten the all blacks as head coach with two different national sides who are they hmm that's a good question hmm hmm that's a great question. Okay, got I think I've got it. All right, that'll do. No, that can't be right. That can't be right. So it's not that. Um, it's not that. Or that. Hmm. No. Ready for the some answers? No. Yeah. Don't we, come on. Question number one. Okay. Uh, I, I guess fastest man. I just guessed. I, I was thinking, obviously, Carl and Isles and stuff, and I just went, no GPS thing. Maybe it's more recent. I'll go Lewis Reese Summit, twelve meters per second. Twelve meters a second. I, I don't know. I was just trying to work Lewis out. Lewis Reese Summit, ten point five meters per second. You both get. Zero points. Ah. Uh. It was Christian Wade, uh. 11.2 metres per second. Wow. Mm. Like we're in the ballpark on the um, yeah, on the time. No, not a million miles off. Uh, now it was the... Registered clubs. Uh, 2,288. 3,100. JB, you're close, but not close enough to get a point. Oh. What? Why was it? 2,099. 2,0... What? It's 2,088. Uh, you said two two eight eight. Yeah, two two eight eight. Sorry. Yes, that's right. No, not not according to the quiz. That's what matters. To, yeah, that's not according to the five hundred remarkable ruby facts yep. for kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So zero zero it is. <laughs> Question number three: Who is making their debut this year? So annoying. I can't think of who it is. I was going to say Portugal, but I know it's not Portugal because you, you can't. You, if you haven't written it yeah. down, there's no no Portugal. answer. I wrote it, not Portugal. Uh, Chile. Ah, well done. Chile Damn is it. correct. Yes. One point to yes. Tim off the mark. Uh, how many times have the Barbars beaten Ireland? No, four. Four? I just guessed zero. Uh, it's five. Five out of six. Do I the... get a oh. point because I'm closer? No. Question number five. This, Which... is, this is in your wheelhouse, JB. Heineken Cup. Yeah. It's Two wrong. French teams have won, reached the final twice without winning it either time. And they are? Claremont. <sighs> Do have... I don't have Claremont. Oh, no, Tim. And of I'm course say it's Claremont. Racing. Uh, well... It's, oh, so you didn't ask. You didn't ask me for my first one. So now oh, I get. So now I get to pick <laughs> which okay. one. So I, I put the. I, I had the two Paris sides as my. Stad and so Racing. Stad and Racing. So I, I get, thought Stad, but I can't remember so the gonna, second. So, uh, but the one I'm more confident on that I'm going to go with is Racing. So it is Claremont and Racing. Yes. So two points yes. to JB, one point to. Of course, Tim. Claremont. So that makes it two all. Uh, yeah, I couldn't remember Stad having two. Yeah, they just played in that one against Leicester, obviously. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. I thought they had one against Cardiff as well, but... Ooh, maybe. Well, maybe they've won it, and that's why, because it's who's yeah, lost twice. lost twice. Let's just have a quick look. So I have got it open here. Stad. Hang on. This question's wrong. Well, would you want to check 2288? So, so do I get two points then? Oh, uh, wait, hang on. I think the question's wrong because those two... So, there are actually four French teams who have reached the final 
Twice. Twice. Not one. There are only two French teams who have reached the final three times without winning. So I get a point for Stad. Because I answered the question correctly. So Stad, yes. Yeah, so the, uh, the question as asked... Points yeah. were available to, for Claremont, Racing, Biarritz, and Stade Francais. Biarritz, I, oh, fuck. <laughs> but I didn't, I, but I, didn't, I didn't ask that question. I, I wasn't given that question to ask. That's all right. Oli so, Ball, you're sacked. Yeah, Claremont and Racing are three. They have reached it three times. So I'm three to up. Yes. So I would have said, if you said four, I'd have got bit Biarritz. But I wasn't so, Here we go. We'll yeah. take it in terms with this one. I've got my answers written down. You've got your answers written down yeah, for the next uh, one? Yeah, go first. Yeah, so the four clubs Bath. that have won it once and never lost. Well, who've, who've no, got no, 100%, 100% won record. 100% record, yeah. Yeah, so um, Bath, you say, JB? Uh, Bath are one of the teams on my list. Bath. Yeah, so that's one all. Uh, Ulster? Incorrect, they lost against Leinster. Oh. Yes! Oh. Was it not Munster? No, Ulster it, lost Did Ulster, Ulster lose a the final? Uh, they oh, lost, no, was and, it? and they lost nine, ten years ago. Ten years ago today. Not today. Not today. This, no, in a, in a final. It, so it's, they lost the eleven uh, oh. twelve final. Damn it! Two. Leinster. Lost it was Leinster. I know, yeah. I know it was. I, but it was. 11, I know my rugby. Eleven years ago, not ten. Eleven right. years ago. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so it's four all. <sighs> okay. So, so that's. Oh, no, no, JB hasn't given his second one. Yeah, yet, yeah. So, so you're just on one all. Yeah. What? Yeah. My next one is wasps. Tim, do you have wasps? I do have wasps. Wasps is correct. So you're on two all. Tense. I also do. Tim, uh, Tim? we'll give you our next one. Saints. No, they no, lost, lost to Mon- uh, Leinster. Um, Shit. Yeah, lost to Leinster. Shit. Yeah, yeah. How do you know Saints lost to. Yeah, was it Munster? Munster, I think they lost yeah. to. I don't think Tigers have lost a final. I was going to say Tigers. Because they beat Munster with that little cheat play. <laughs> Didn't they lose to Wasps one year? <sighs> they would have lost to Wasps. Well done. Mm. They have lost to Wasps. Tigers were um, Tigers have lost three times in ninety seven, two thousand seven, and two thousand nine oh to Leinster. Dear. Oh dear! So with two did arguing, JB get one uh, more? Uh, one so more I've than I did. Two. You've got none so far. No, not oh, no, so no, far. We've, we've, we've both yeah, given yeah. four answers, haven't we? Yeah. So that's it. So no, no so I've got. So one, you both got Bath. So you got one point I've, for I've Bath. Got, I've got one no, more no, you haven't. Because you yeah. got one. Because ro- you got one wrong. No, there's, there's, there's four answers. Yeah, no, but you got one wrong. So that's yeah. like, you, you can't say? have five guesses. So, no, I haven't. I've had. You wasps. can't keep guessing. Yeah, I haven't. I've had. Wasps. You guess what? Leicester. Bath. Wasps, Bath. Leicester. Leicester. I've only gone for the three English clubs. Okay, and there was none that you, none that Tim had said that you, because you, Tim, yeah, you said Tim, Northampton yeah, so, and Ulster. No, so yeah, you're but, right. But he's got Bath too. Yeah, yes. and you got wasps because yes. I got Bath and wasps. Right, so JB, you do have one more. Toulouse. I don't believe that they've ever lost a final. Hmm. Toulouse. Uh, so you you didn't watch the 2004 or 2008 finals, JB? Uh, <laughs> they lose to Barretts. Uh, sure, they beat Barretts. Who were run up in So did he get three points? Did he get three points two in that points. round? Two both one. got two points. Two so both, one, okay, it? so I'm still one. Yeah. It's two one that round, wasn't it? No, I got no, um, I got wasps, wasps and Bath. Wasps. Well, sorry, two two from that round. Oh, phew. So I'm still still so, one point. So ahead. the other the other two teams. Who on earth? Um, one hmm. very recent. La Rochelle. No, no, they, they lost. lost the final, of course. They lost the final just uh, before La Rochelle. Who won it? Saracens. Exeter. Exeter. Ah. Oh, of course. One from one. And oh, the, my goodness. And the other one of the hardest to get because they've been in three finals and won all three. Toulon. Uh, Toulon. Toulon. I thought they lost one. Oh, wow. Yes. Wow, wow, oh. wow. So now it's the sin bin. When did the sin <laughs> bin come in? I said 2002. I said 2001. Tim gets the point. Really? Uh, 2001. Wow. Is this is heartbreaking. So 6 4 to Cocker. That was a total just like, oh, we'll just pick a year. I, I thought that was, I just had it in my head, it was about the same time as professionalism, but nope. nope. Uh, this is the toughest question of them all, I think. Only player to be Simbin in a World Cup final. I Rocky Elson. I didn't even guess it. <laughs> oh, let, let, me, let, me, let me guess. Let me guess. Uh, Sonny Bill Williams. Uh, both. No. Incorrect. Sonny Bill Williams was the only. I think he played in this final. It was 2015 World Cup final. Michael Hooper. No, no. it was Ben Smith. Ben Smith. Ben Smith. <laughs> you never would have got that. No. Nope. Never in a million <laughs> nope. years. Um, Michael Hooper. How many? How many? Five how many and a half years. years. Uh, five point five. Uh, four is what I've put, but I've no idea. 
Uh, three, just over three. What? Three years and 140 days to reach wow. 50 caps. It just shows how cheap the caps are. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so South Africa, England, England, Australia, New Zealand, France. Uh, France, New Zealand, definitely, because that was 87 and... Well done. And that was the very first World Cup, and it was also the final in 2007, yep. was it? Um, and then England, Australia, 91 and 03. Yep. And then I put New Zealand, South Africa. No, England, South Africa. Matthew oh, Tate. Of course, I've, oh my God! Yes. You idiot! Uh, so you're back within a point with one question left. or Two questions left. So you each got... So JB, JB got, all, got three, all three, and I Tim, got you two got two. Yeah. Phil's keeping score. So, I, I, so yeah. I do not know. So seven, eight, eight, seven. I do not know a single Premiership player of the year. So I'm I, I think this is really hard. Because premiership. it's going to be someone who's played well in the Premiership. So get rid of all the England in, internationals. And you're going to be left with someone like a Lewis Ludlam before we got famous. That's who it will be. So based on that, I'm going to say it is... <sighs> ben Earl. I guess Ben Earl. Oh, did you? Yeah. Go on. Ben Earl, the incumbent uh, Premiership player. Is he really? He is, yes. <laughs> okay, and, fine. But j- j- your logic... So Ben Earl is not correct, sadly. Yeah. Um, in uh, Ask me again in six months' time. He might be. Um, your logic stacks up, though, JB. Chris Robshaw. There you go. Wow. So he must have got it in 2012. And the final yeah. um, question... Two coaches have beaten the All Blacks as head coach. Eddie Jones. Got Eddie Jones. And the last one, I literally don't know, so I'm going to have a guess now. It's not... Okay. Come on. Oh, hang on. As a head no, coach. you can't do this Come now. On. Come on. He hasn't Come written on. it down. Because right. I think three, I've got the answer. Two, one. Warren Gatland. No, it's not that. It's not Warren Gatland. It's cor- incorrect. So you've got one point. And t- Tim, you have won it because you've got Eddie Jones. But... For the decisive in. win to get ten points in total, it and, is and equal your score. No, I got twelve. Uh-huh. Michael, I got I got lucky on a couple of them. Michael Checker, correct. Oh, well done. Of course, it's Michael Checker. Great work. There you go. And I think I think the ones I got lucky on were the um, I got eleven meters per second squared uh, per second square. Eleven meters. Per, <laughs> it's not acceleration. It's it's speed. Um, eleven meters per second was what I guessed for eleven point two. And what else did I get right? Something else lucky. Oh, I got Michael Hooper as well. Oh, nice. What what player did you guess for the um, for the fastest? Um, so it was the question. Admitted that I, there was only one point available for that oh, okay. question when I did it. Yeah. So you, you've had another shot. I didn't didn't guess that one. Yeah, Christian Wade. Christian Wade. Going to that. I enjoyed that, Phil. I yeah, I thank Ollie Poole. Thank you, Ollie. Apart from his mistake on the um, <laughs> the, the runners up to the Heineken Cup. Oh, there's what else he got wrong? Yeah, they could all be wrong. It could have been nonsense. Yeah, he needs to go. And, like, he needs to go and lean on a ruck and have a good old <laughs> think about Maul. what he's done. I just, realized, I just realised I should have um, fact checked all of these because he, he could have done to me what someone did to you with um, Paddy Jackson's place of birth, JB. Exactly right. And well, just made you Anchorman style read out. I actually think that I thought we confirmed that he was born in Birmingham. Mm, pretty sure he was. Not quite sure. No. <laughs> no. He won't. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Northern no, Ireland. No, definitely. Um, so, Italy France is the other game this weekend that we've not yet touched on either team. Ooh, that'll be close. And I mentioned but, on the last podcast, like France, due to injuries, are in a luxurious position where they've got. The bones of an incredible squad, but they're in some positions at scrum half and a hooker, and in their back three a little bit. They're, a few injuries mean that they're now giving some game time to their fourth and fifth choice in each of those positions, and it turns out they're pretty handy as well. Mm. They've they've definitely got some options. They, the French team is, I, I do think, as much as I love Ireland, I think this Ireland team is very very good. I think France are favourites for the, both this tournament and the World Cup. Yeah. Uh, I don't think any team will get a Grand Slam, mind you, because... I think France will. Because France have got to go round two in 12, away to, 12 days away from now, Ireland. away to Ireland. The reason I think France will get a Grand Slam is because I think France are a serious World Cup team. Um, and I think Ireland are just a very good team. If France is serious about the World Cup, they'll want to go there and they'll want to win. And I think they will win. Mm, I, I think... 
I think Ireland are a serious World Cup team. I think, I think they'll they're go contenders. The you think they're what, sorry? I think they'll, I, I think they'll go out in the quarters. <laughs> they may well do this is their side of the draw. Di- history would, would dictate they're that. They're in the side of the draw with France, New Zealand, South Africa, and them. It will probably be the, in their side of the draw quarterfinal. Yeah. So very likely they'll yeah. go out in the quarters. France will get the Grand Slam. Mm. Who's I'd, stopping that power? I, Ireland are the team to stop. Ireland are the only team who can do. Yeah. I mean, I, I, so Ireland's victory over the All Blacks was very impressive, even though they had an absolute monumental hammering in the, in, in the, in, first, in the first game. It's very impressive. But, you know, size is a quality all of its own. So They, they did beat South Africa as well. They did. They did, actually. But, uh, yeah, I... Mm. No, I think France are a step ahead of South Africa. I think the, the quality of their backs, the size of their pack, the organisation, Sean Edwards, the defence. When you start stacking all the little pieces together, you realise this is a quality, quality team. Um, how does one defend DuPont? It's not immediately obvious. DuPont is tricky. But then teams have beaten Toulouse before. Well, yeah. they, they're, not, they're not infallible. It's crazy but when you look at the... This week, France's game yeah. this week will be... Yeah. I, uh, I think Italy are doing some good things, but they... They're, they're going to get smashed. They're, yeah, they're we'll different get, gravy to France. We'll be competitive. Yeah. Yeah. Sadly, I agree. Yeah. France, it's just... Oh, man. It's like Jalabert and Untermach at 10. The back row, Olivon, Aldri and Jalonch. Makalu off the bench. Oh my goodness me. Taufa Fenua and um Willemza, second rows. They're like Wokey's out of the tournament, but he is. Yeah, and he's whether I don't think they'll go for Taufa Fenua. Just No probably because they're too that, that is too big and is not, it? not athletic enough. Is there such a thing? Um such a thing as not athletic enough, I guess. Yeah. Just. Yeah. I mean remember when Toulouse were bad? They fielded like the heaviest uh, pack of all time. That is true, and that was uh, when they were bad. Not, yeah, but not then good. it was superseded, wasn't it, by the by another Toulouse pack that won the won the championship. So uh, the European Cup. So you might just say actually they were just wrong in terms of they didn't have it big enough. <laughs> <laughs> they were only big by how small the largest pack exactly. of all time was. Yeah. So and that was like I'm sure that's Joe Takori and like. The, all the Macca boys. Yeah, um, yeah. Edward Macca. Yeah, a few others. They Who retained. G- uh, Gillian Galal, the massive, uh, bad remember. bad weight number eight. Uh, blonde, oh, yes. Blondie, blondie. The bear. He had like was, it, was it Gillian? G- yeah, it was Gill- Gillian Galal. Galal. Galant? Galal. Galan? Galan. Galan. Yeah, he had one incredible game. I want to say it's against Saracens. Like, unbelievable game. We're against one of the English teams. Look there. This is the future of French rugby here. Oh, he's at he's uh, Leon now, according to this. Really? Not playing that much. He, he was, he's listed as 6'4 and 130 kg. 130? Yeah. Wow. It, it wasn't all good weight. No, it wasn't. And that was the same back row as Louis Pickamon. Mm. So they had a lot of big boys. They just got a little bit bigger. Mm. Some, bi- also, some better boys. Yeah, not just bigger, but older as well, which I really appreciated. So... Um, Jerome Kano Kano's and great signing who's the other boy great signing uh, Maka and not Maka oh it's Corey and some other big boy as well so the interesting thing about this was the biggest player on the park that day was Will Skelton in terms of his, of his size but the average oh, oh yeah so <laughs> get this La Rochelle played with Weenie Antonio and Will Skelton and still had a smaller average pack size <laughs> <laughs> than to lose. Ridiculous. <laughs> I'm just looking at the, the stash of all, all of the teams and I'll, I'll rank them. Uh, France will come top of that as well. Hmm. Their stash is the best, followed by Scotland. Oh, have you got the ki- the, the, the launch with... Yeah, the launch with the captains. Yeah. Um, and the French kit is the best one. Scotland's is the second best. I like that. Uh, Italy, third. Uh, well, uh... Yeah, Italy third, Wales fourth. I don't like the Wales having black socks. Feels odd. Or is mm-hmm. that dark green socks? Dark, dark green, green socks are beautiful. Yeah, oh, they're all right, actually. Maybe I'll, I might jump Wales above Italy. Thank so you. France, Scotland, Wales, Italy, Ireland, and e- which I don't like that Irish kit at all. Even more of an abomination than the Ireland kit is England's. 
which would be a lovely Umbro kit if they just got rid of those stupid... You've got the silly crosses on it. The silly crosses on the bottom yeah. half across the midriff, mm. which is not good. The rest of the kit is lovely, actually. I do, yeah. I particularly like those England socks, actually. Yeah, lovely socks. Interestingly. Mm. Excellent. Uh, any more for any more? Where's the bed? Uh, oh, God. I've got to be up in five hours for a train. Well, yeah, Are hours. you joking? No, I'm not joking. Oh, my God, Phil. <laughs> right. Yeah, I've got to be up similar time to what? See how much we... See the commitment we go to oh. to bring you your rugby, right? Um, I've got a lift in, in the morning. Predictions, yeah. Wales v. Ireland? Ireland. 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 Ireland, close game, but actually Ireland to win by 12 points. Ireland, Scotland and France. So it's at Twickenham, obviously Tim will be there, yeah. being hosted by uh, no, Bill Sweeney. Not being hosted, yeah, yeah. Why is he there? Because I'm just I'm he, just there. So next week he's going to be talking about... I, I applied for accreditation and I got it. Oh, there oh, we go. Nice. Why didn't you say so? Nice. Well, I Hang just... out with the big boys now. Yeah. Um, so ne- next week... He'll be talking about how the wayside, wayside tackle is such a good idea. Oh, can you imagine? He's going to come come back next week with an England blazer. <laughs> Lads, I've been ed- educated. Let yeah. me educate you. <laughs> Let me tell you about wayside tackles. Uh, uh, the uh, science is peer reviewed. You must listen to the science. Ireland by eight. Uh, England by two. France by 19. I, th- uh, you, I think you're not far off. I, I really hope England win. I, I think it's going to be... A wonderfully turgid, boring affair. Yeah, agreed. Um, that Steve Borthwick will just love. Oh, by the way, uh, you've both watched the Steve Borthwick opening press conference and others. Have I? Well, have you? I, yeah, I, 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 have. I assume you have. I have. Um, I, so he was trying to like tell stories yeah. throughout all of it he was like oh when I first met Owen when he was 17 oh and, yes and I've when seen Courtney, these, Courtney Laws when these the, awkward videos yeah the players all grow the first thing my son said to me when I told him son I'm going to be England coach yeah, yeah all, all that was yeah. It, and who is it who is it that coaches Tom Dunn coaches that might be in a different press conference co- coaches his kids and all this stuff god it it's so it's so dull it's just he's, but it, clearly what he's trying he's to do. He's making an effort. Well, it, well, well someone's, well, make, someone's making think, him do this. No, so I don't think that's true. I think he's making an effort to not give anything away about how he's going to play the game, who's doing what in training. Uh, he's, he's just talking. These, so he's got a ten-minute slot or fifty-minute slot. He's got to fill fill it. That, fill it with nonsense so no one gets any information so out of anything. England were giving putting on clips, weren't they? Of both doing like players in pairs going Elliot Daly got a boot really fast what a player and it's just it was so like just reading well, up the script on Phil's point there that he's kind of saying lots in order to to say nothing to at say all. nothing at all yes um, our weekly my little weekly whatsapp message from Dougie of the Mall Over podcast who always bobs me something interesting uh, when he knows we'll be recording the podcast and he's right to do so on this one as well Netflix documentary on the Guinness Six Nations has been hit with an access row. Uh, City AM understands that in some cases, levels of access between individual unions and the producers has not been finalised. The Six Nations starts on Saturday. <laughs> so, the least surprising development in rugby. Ever. Yeah, we've got a potential open goal. Let's let's whack it over the bar. Well, if it, if it was all about Netflix. Um, Eddie Jones would have been infinitely more interesting yep. than Borthwick, but probably Borthwick would get better results. Yeah, I hope. Phil, go go get a I'm few off. hours kit. I'm why, off. Why are you more bothered about his training, not my lifting? <laughs> <laughs> and let the boys play. Let the boys play.